Okay guys, today we're going to learn a little bit about making something called a digital notebook. It's really a way for you to keep a learning portfolio or a list of the things that we do in class, the new things that you learned, the things you've reflected on, what you've read, what you've thought about, what you've written. It's all in one place so you can track your progress and see how you've grown throughout this last semester. Again, it's a basic recording of your learning and your own reflections. It's cool because it's all online, so it's something you can access at any time if you want to go back and look at it even next year. Um, if you want to use it to show somebody in another class, it's always there for you. There's even an app that you can download on your phone, uh, Blogger, where you can look at your blog at any time. Uh, it's also a cool way for you to be able to add pictures, add video, add articles that you might find that you might be interested in and it's a way for you to be creative it's really a see that you can express yourself you can do a lot with it it doesn't have to all be the same all of your portfolios can look different and lastly it's really a way to show what you know it's a way for you to display everything that you've learned and it's a way for you to look back and say wow i really grew i came a long way during this class even just this last semester you've learned so much i can see huge growth and you are going to be able to see how much that you have changed and you've evolved and you've grown as a student Here's some reasons why you might be into it, why you might like it, or why teachers might like it. Number one, you're going to improve your writing because you're writing for an audience. Um, your friends, your classmates, teachers are going to be reading your blog post. So you'll have to be thoughtful, you'll have to be reflective, you'll have to be creative. It's also a way for you to reflect on what you've learned, to not just soak up the material like a sponge, but to really look back on it and think, how am I going to use this? How could I possibly use this in another class or even for life after high school? We talked about how summary skills have been a little bit shaky, and this is a good way for you to practice them without it being super boring. It's also a good way for you to communicate with others about your ideas, what you think about a text, what you think about a book, uh, what you think about an important topic, an idea, um, even a poem. I know you all love poetry so much, but even the little things like that. And lastly, it's a way for you to refine your own ideas about fiction and nonfiction text. It's going to get you thinking about the text. The requirements for your blog, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing that you're going to have to spend a ton of time outside of school doing. You will have time in class to do it. And I'll always, always, always tell you before something is due and what you need to be doing. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do weekly blog posts that summarize our learning activities of the week. I'm thinking on Fridays after your quiz, uh, maybe even on Thursdays before your quiz as a way to review for it, to look back on what you've done throughout the week. If we're doing something super fun in class, I might ask you to add an, an additional blog post as well. Uh, number three, something else I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to comment at least two times per week on another student's blog. And I guarantee you, once you put your two comments, you'll have to respond and think again and type another comment. So you'll end up having more than two per week. I want you to have pictures for every blog post. Yep, you can actually use your phone to take pictures and put it on your blog. Uh, if you don't have a phone, then I have some devices that you can use to take some pictures. And lastly, you need to have a personal reflection or a connection to the text. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. That's basically when you take the text and not just tell me what happened, who the characters are, what the theme is, but tell me how you can relate that to your own life, how you could possibly relate to another character, uh, what you think about the situations that the character is in. It's just a neat way to use your life and see how the book connects to it. To get started, you need to go to blogger.com. You'll see a page that looks similar to this. The color might be a little bit different, but you'll see in the top right corner something that says sign in. Once you click sign in, you'll see one of these two screens. I tried it on a couple different Chromebooks and some Chromebooks showed me the picture on the left 
and some Chromebooks show me the picture on the right. If you see the picture on the left, you need to click Blogger Profile where it says create a limited blogger profile. You want to do that. Uh, if you see the picture on the right, then you need to make sure you're choosing the school account that's posted. It's the one that's your first name, dot last name, at students. It's that one right there. You want to make sure you choose that. Next, you're going to be asked to provide your name. Please put your legit first and last name. Once you do that, then you should click continue to blogger. It might pop up that it wants you to try some new themes. We're not worried about these new themes, so just click maybe later. Next, you'll be presented with a screen that looks like this. The first thing you need to do is you need to title your learning portfolio. You want to title it your first name, your last name, then Digital Notebook 2016-2017. If you scroll down a little bit, you want to choose a theme that is simple. There's one that's actually labeled simple. Uh, and then where it says address, you want to make the address your first name and your last name. If this is unavailable, no big deal, don't panic. Put first name, last name, and then add digital notebook to the end of that, and it should work. If it doesn't, just let me know, call me over, and I'll be happy to help you choose something else. Once you've done all of that, you can see at the bottom there's a little orange button that says create blog, and you should click on that. It's going to ask you, uh, do you want to find a domain name? And we're not interested in doing that right now, so click no thanks. Next, you'll see a screen that looks like this. It's time for you to add some categories. If you see on the left-hand side of the screen, you should scroll down a little bit and it'll say pages. You want to click where it says pages. You'll be taken to a screen that looks like this, and now you want to actually create the page. So if you look, there's a little gray button that says new page. Go ahead and click that, wait on it to load, and you will see a screen that looks like this right here. Up at the top, there's a little orange thing that says page. You want to type in vocabulary in that first little line, little box. Uh, once you've done that, make sure that you click the Save button for it to actually save it. And then after you've clicked Save, you want to click on Close, which is at the top right corner. Your page is going to show up on this little listing right here. You can see where it says Vocabulary. You have your page. You're good to go. Now you want to go back and do the same exact steps you've just done to create that vocabulary page, but you want to create six more pages, and this is what they should say. Weekly learning, writing, informational text, fiction, projects, and self-reflection. If you need to go back, rewind a little bit, and play this again so you know exactly how to create your pages, go for it and do it. Once you've added your pages, you have to click something to make the pages show up on your actual web page. So how you do that is you want to look on the left column and there will be a button that says layout. Click the button that says layout. Once you click the layout button, it will display a bunch of different options um, in the center of your screen. You should scroll down until you find the option that says cross column and then there will be a plus sign that says add a gadget. Click on add a gadget. Once you've clicked on add a gadget, there will be a lot of different options that pop up for you. You want to scroll through the list until you find the option that says pages. It'll be on a little red icon that has a piece of paper on it. If you look directly to the right, there will be a plus sign, and you want to make sure that you've clicked that plus sign. When you've done that, that will add all of your pages to your blog post. Um, and the next thing that you can do is you can look on the left side of your screen once again, and you can see where it says theme. You want to click on theme, and this is the fun part. This is where you can customize 
your colors and what your blog is going to look like. So once you've clicked on theme, you can see a button at the bottom of the screen that's also orange and it says customize. Go ahead and click on customize. When you've clicked on customize, you can change everything here from uh, the background to the template, the layout, whatever you would like. You can take some time playing around with it to get it how you want it to look. Um, but just make sure that once you have it how you want it to look, that you click the orange button in the right corner that says apply to blog. And once you do that, you're happy with it, then you can click the blue button that says back to blogger. And that's right beside the apply to blog button up at the top. The next thing that you'll be able to do is uh, you need to just play around with your blog and see what kind of changes or what kind of edits that you're able to make. Uh, one way to do this is you can go back to your dashboard and select pages and you can choose which page that you want to edit. Uh, once you click edit underneath whichever page you want to work with, you can experiment with adding text or you can even link to another document, you can add a picture, just look around on there and see what kind of things you can find. When you click on that edit button underneath your page, it's going to pop up just a blank screen like this. Uh, this is where you can add text, you can add a picture, you can add a video, you can add a link, you can do so many different things. Don't be afraid to try things. You're not going to mess it up. We can always go back and undo it. There's not a specific thing I want you to write about or I want you to post about. I just want you to get familiar with adding things and taking things away for me. Uh, whenever you finish doing whatever you're doing, you want to make sure, once again, that you click Update. It's the orange button up in the right corner. Whenever you're finished doing all that you're doing, you will see on the left side of the screen, it's near the top and it's really small, so you have to look for it. It's blue and it says view blog. When you do that, when you click on it, it will open your actual blog. It'll show you what your blog is going to look like. When you get there, you want to click on the URL, the little web address. Uh, it'll turn it blue and you want to copy that. Remember to copy, you either two finger tap once it's all blue and click copy or turn it all blue, hold down the control key and then hit the letter C and that will also copy it for you. The last thing that you need to do is you need to go to the link I have listed for you down at the bottom and it's going to ask you for your name, your class period and then the URL for your blog. So make sure you have all that and you will be good to go. Next week when we come in, we'll do a little bit of work with this. We'll start posting, we'll start playing around with it, we'll take some pictures, we might take some videos and we'll throw it up on your blog and really start your learning portfolio.